your rack is giving you terrible answers and even without looking at the code you might know what the reason for that is it is not your vector database not your embeddings and even not your lom it is most probably your chunking strategy in this video i'm going to show you four different chunking techniques and on top of that i'm going to show you a bonus approach that can create even better chunks for your rack hey everyone my name is venelin over the past couple of years i have debugged a lot of rack applications and in most of the cases i've seen that their problem was their chunking strategy in this video i'm going to show you four different techniques that are increasing in complexity and overall giving you better and better results and i'm going to show you how you can implement them within lang chain all of the available code is going to be available for mxpert pro subscribers and it is going to be using only local models let's get started why chunking still matters even though we have models with a million on even more context windows well it appears that context window can be effectively used that is the recall from that context window even with modern and powerful LMs is not perfect according to the research provided by chroma here even though we have more and more powerful LMs their performance is still not perfect according to their evaluations shown right here and on top of that it is probably not very practical to take your company's complete database create a text file out of it and put it within the prompt of your LOM. this is where chunking comes in in this part of your ingestion pipeline for your rack applications you are given a set of large text and these texts are going to be essentially split into chunks that are generally smaller than the input large text when chunking goes wrong usually your lom is unable to get enough information about what the answer to your query might be so here for example we are looking at a very naive chunking strategy given this document in markdown format you can see that with a naive 100 character chunking you get a split that is not very useful you can see here that within this part right here uh, you are not chunking correctly the business days and then uh, you in the next chunk you are starting with ines days and all this information would generally confuse your lom application and in these cases the context is destroyed instead of created for your rack application if you want to get access to the complete source code along with a complete text tutorial on the chunking techniques go and subscribe to mxr pro there you're going to find a complete ai engineering academy that starts from the basics of machine learning pytorch and how you can set up your own developer environments then it goes to deploying a real world machine learning pipeline then it goes into lms racks context engineering and ai agents so if you want to get better ai engineer go and subscribe to mxl pro thank you for this tutorial we're going to be using this pdf that contains a customer complaint policy it contains dense text along with bullet lists that are going to be converted very nicely into markdown format and at the end this document contains complaint form which is also an interesting part of how you can chunk these types of documents within my local cursor instance i have the document converted into markdown format using doclink so here you can see that the conversion wasn't perfect and we have some artifacts instead of bullet points but this is an example of a real world conversion after we got uh, all of this document here i'm going to show you probably the most used chunking strategy that people are using when starting with ARAC applications and in all honesty this strategy is not that bad as long as you know what the trade-offs are this is going to be using the recursive character text splitter and this strategy has a way to split your chunks into 
the chunk size that you're giving here, which is 1024 characters in our case, and you're going to be able to provide a chunk overwap, that is which amount of characters are going to be overwapping right here. This character text splitter is going according to a separator in order that is provided by the recursive character text splitter. It goes through new lines, then it goes through paragraphs, sentences, etc. And based on that, this is going to create different chunks from the text that you're going to give. In this case, we are given seven different chunks and we are going to see the first chunk. So for example, this one is taking the customer complaint policy along with the introduction, along with the responsibilities. But immediately you can see that this is now giving us a split right here after the responsibilities and the whole complete bullet list is not available as a context for your chunk. On the next chunk, we are given the middle point of this bullet list. And as you can see, again, this is not a perfect split. The Even this second chunk is starting with the next title. So again, this is not a perfect approach. The next chunker that is a very useful in practice is the markdown header text splitter. This Chunker, as the name suggests, is using the markdown structure of your documents. So if you have exported your documents using Doclink or other approach to a markdown file and your documents have natural boundaries, for example, headers, subheaders, etc., you can use this approach to split pretty much 60, 70, 80% of all real world documents that is going to be using the headers to split the positions. Of course, one of the cons of this approach is that you don't have control of how large your chunks are going to be. So for example, if the document owner is deciding that the header is going to be, for example, using 2000 or 3000 words within this paragraph, you're going to be unable to get a better split based on that. When we split our document using the markdown header text splitter, you can see that we are getting 12 different chunks, so a bit more compared to the previous one. And here you can see that we want to split on H1s and H2s. So in this case, when I get a look at the first chunk, we are also getting a minimum split size. So these ones are uh, merged into one. And you can see that the first chunk is giving us the first subsection of the document itself. Then the responsibilities are containing the next bullet list points along with the responsibilities heading and you can see that this is now much better but again you are losing the length and the size of your chunking abilities when your documents don't have markdown or when the markdown sections are too large you can use semantic meaning or embeddings in order to get a look at how you can split your chunks for this part of the code, I have taken five sentences from the start of the customer complaint policy. And when you apply the semantic chunker to the sentences using the approach that I'm going to show you in a second, you are going to see that you are getting these differences or distances between different set of sentences that you're providing. And essentially what you're doing here is that you're picking a threshold on top of which you're going to be creating these chunks. So for example, for our different uh, four, in our case, splits available between the sentences, you're going to see that after the first and the second sentence, the chunker is say saying us that we need to have a split then after the worst and the previous to the worst sentence, again, we should do a split according to this technique. To implement the chunking that I have shown you on the chart, you're going to be able to use semantic chunker from Langchain, and then you're going to be calling split text along with the text that is going to be the text from the sentences. And as you can see that the result here is a list of chunks and we have two separate chunks. The first chunk is pretty much the first four sentences combined. And then the last one is the last sentence that we have provided. 
on top of that you're going to be receiving this split that is both coherent and using the meaning of the text itself instead of just looking at the structure the negative of this approach is that can be very slow depending on the amount of text that you're going to be providing and the speed and accuracy of your embedding technique so you both need a good machine and a good semantic and embedding model in order to get good chunks out of this approach the last approach that we're going to have a look at is the one that is a bit more powerful and it works quite well in practice unfortunately it requires a lot of compute in order to give you better chunks as possible of course it is also limited by the size of your documents and the size of the model's context window that you have so in this case we are going to be using a prompt in order to provide the split points or the chunking points for your LM. and within this prompt you are going to be able to give specific instructions of how your chunking should be provided of course this is depending on the type of documents that you have i have first learned about this approach by the chroma team and their chunking evaluation techniques blog post and it starts by having uh, split points that you're going to be providing to the LOM. So in our case, since we have a markdown document, I'm going to be inserting a split point after each new line that is starting then with a heading. So you can see the result of that. We are going to be having these tags that are both starting a chunk and then ending a chunk. And then here you're going to get the chunk index. You can see here the chunk 0, chunk, chunk 1, then chunk 2, etc. So based on that, your LOM is going to be provided with a choice to split or not to split at these points. And here is the prompt that I'm going to be using. Uh, this prompt contains instructions that are somewhat specific to the documents that I'm going to be using. I'm also specifically requesting that form images and tables are in separate chunks along with the text that describes them. And here you're going to see that we want the response to be essentially a list of IDs of the chunks that the splits must be provided within. And here you can see that I'm using Quentry, the 4 billion parameter model to do the chunking for us. You can use much more powerful models for that. And I'm going to be using Oama to run this completely locally. And after the response is given, you can see that since this is a reasoning model, we are getting uh, some sort of thing that is provided by the model along with the response which is a list of two chunks that the model thinks that we should split into and i'm going to be using the ast literal eval to create a set of these two different split points and then i have this helper function to split by the split points provided by the lom when we split these chunks essentially you're going to get three different chunks since we have two split points and these are the results the first one actually contains the customer complaint policy then an introduction uh, then you can see that this is also given within this first chunk the amount of responsibilities then you're going to get the customer complaint procedure along almost the start of the customer complaint policy and then within the final chunk you're going to get the customer complaint policy form itself it appears that this is pretty much the best possible approach that you can tune along with a very strong lom to get the best possible chunks the bonus technique that I have promised you is actually contextual retrieval that was introduced by Anthropic. And the gist of this is that you can add additional or contextual information about the document right within the chunk that you're going to be creating. And in our case, for example, if we have chunked only the customer complaint policy form, the model wouldn't know anything about the rest of the document. So in our case, we are going to be adding additional context with a local VLM or visual language model. And here you can see the response from such a chunk. You are going to get the chunk context and then the original chunk text. Let me show you how we can do this in code. 
mode, I'm going to be loading the Coin 2.5 VL model or visual language model, the 3 billion parameter version. And again, I'm going to be using Olama. And this is again the prompt. I want two to three sentences that are going to be enriching the context of our rack. And I'm going to be providing the full text to the mo model and then the chunking text that is going to be provided right here within the prompt. And also I'm going to be providing the first page image of the document. It is usually the case that the first page contains a lot of information about what this type of document is, the company logo and some more summarization from the type of the document. And with this code, we are going to be asking the Quen 2.5 VL model to do the contextualizing for us. We're going to be providing the prompt along with the image of the first page of our document. And after we get this executed, you see that we get a list of contexts. Each context is going to be related to the three chunks that we have from the AOM chunking. I'm going to be enriching the chunk with that information. This is the result for the first chunk. But more importantly, for the customer complaint form, you're going to see that we are going to be adding the chunk context. And now when our RAC application is going to be using our chunk for the customer complaint form, it has a background or context information about what this type of document is and can probably give us a better results when we are asking about this particular form. And these are the resources that I have used to prepare this notebook. We've seen a lot of techniques and a lot of approaches to chunking. So which one is the best for your use case? Well, the answer is that it depends on your documents. But in general, if you have documents that are converted into a markdown, the markdown splitter is probably your best choice as a starting point. Of course, the recursive character text splitter is a very nice splitter as well if you just want to get a prototype up and running. And after that, I would go to the semantic chunker, have a look at whether or not based on my evaluations, this is providing better results compared to the markdown one. And then the AOM chunking, if you have a lot of resources or a lot of money to spare, you are going to be able to get probably the best chunks possible, given that you have a strong model and given that your AOM is cheap and fast enough to run on a lot of documents. So thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. If you want to get access to the complete source code along with a complete text tutorial, go and subscribe to MLExperto where you can find the complete AI Engineering Academy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.